Hey, this is Big Ken at Big Ken Jigs. We're doing a live video of how to tie a jig. So, first thing you need to do is get you some glue. And I'm going to show you why we put the glue on there at the end of the teaching. Anyway, so I put a little drop of glue on there. Then I'll take my thread, wind it up on there, just a lock of that. I then want to cut the excess off. And you're probably going to depend on how big your feathers are. You're going to need two feathers. If you get lucky and get some big feathers, you did a good job, you know. But you're going to have to have some white feathers to tie kind of like this, but you just have to do the best you can. But anyway, so what I do is I just take the feathers, like so, and I cut a V-cut. Now, a V-cut is that right there when you cut the bone off a feather. See, your bone goes right through here in the middle. So a V-cut, you take your scissors, and you cut it like that, and that's a V-cut. Probably looks something just about like, like that right there. So what I do is I take it, I V-cut it to about two inches. Uh, leave about two inches of the feathers up, up above it. Uh, we're doing this live, so if I don't answer your questions, it's because we're doing a video for YouTube. But I'll be glad to answer them next time I come on, because this video is going on YouTube. So I had a guy want me to show him how to tie. So anyway, you just get your V cuts, and leave about that much of your tail if you can. <clears throat> And I've taught a few videos on this, but this is for you too, so I hope y'all enjoy it. Then take your V-cuts, put them together like this, and I'll show you why I put that glue on there at the end of the show. But now, it takes a little time to tie jigs like this, but it looks really good. Now, once you get your V-cuts, take your finger poke it in there and get it nice and even because you want that nice bone and even. If you don't, it'll look crazy when you put it on there. So, <clears throat> put it on the side. I do each side at a time. Now, you can get you a bunch of V-cuts and stick it in the middle. It'll work just the same way. But personally, see, I haven't got nothing on that side, but I've got it on this side. So, you take your other feather do the same thing. Just cut your video, video, cut your feathers just like I'm doing right here. Now people say, well how many V-cuts you do? Well I don't know, I don't count, it just depends on the feather. You know, if it's a nice slipping feather, you know, you can do it all the way up to about two inches of the feather left because we're going to use that when we get done. We got that. We got about two inches of feather left. Now, if you get smaller feathers, then we'll just have to use the whole feather and cut a tail off. But we try to try your best to get some big feathers. And I get mine. I get my feathers from Wasp Products. Uh, they make, seem to make a little bit bigger feathers. But anyway, so you put this in on this side. Tighten her up just like that. By the way, this jig is called Code Blue or Dallas Cowboy, either one you want to call it. So now, now, there you go. You've got your foundation all the way around. Now, you can leave your jig like that fish with it, and you'll catch this much fish. But personally, I like to add a little. It looks better, I think, to add a little bone. So you take your feather feather, and you cut it to what size you want. I'm going to say I'm going to cut it about three quarters of an inch V-cut off there. 
like that. And then I'm going to stick it together like this right here. See that? And then I'm going to put it on this side. Right here. Once I get that on there, I just twist it up. And there's one side of the feather done. See how nice and neat that is? So now on your other side, like I said, I'll answer, I can't answer no questions right now because we're doing this for YouTube, but I'll be glad to do it if you leave comments later or something. Right now we're doing this for YouTube, so I'll cut a little bit off. Now, the trick on this is you want to get this even with the other side, which is easy because you got something to go by right here. So you want to put this feather to the tip of this feather at the end of this, like I'm doing here. If you can see it or not, when I get it on there even, I take this finger right here and I hold it against the hook shank because you got it even now. You just stir it right up, thread it right up, and there you go. You've got an even Steven tail, professional looking tail. You got it even on this side and this side. Don't worry about it if you cut it too short because you can back it off. You've got this much room to play with. That's about an inch. So you can take your feather and pull it back if you have to as long as you get it even with this uh, back here, this feather back here. So this this particular color, it takes two-tone color. And I'm going to do the blend-in style. <clears throat> so... The blending style is where you get another feather and you cut two V cuts. We'll say probably five eighths or half inch of the bone. Because you don't want it no longer than your thread here, that bone. So what we'll do is we'll do like a three quarter. So we'll put that there and we'll get another one. Okay. Then we'll put them two together, like so. Just push your finger to get them even. You want these to be even now. See how even the bone is? Okay, then you want to stick it on the side of the shank, the side of the hook, and just go real easy with it when you're going down. And you want to roll over the bone. You don't want the bone sticking out, you want to roll the thread over the bone. And if you do, that's okay. But you really, you want to just roll the, the, the thread over the bone. And once you get it like that, you just, it'll kind of blend in a little bit. Now, it'll take a little while probably to get used to, but it kind of blends in there. And just do the same thing on the other side. Get your two V cuts. Y'all may hear the washing machine in the background, but as long as you hear me, that's all that matters. <coughs> Do the other side. And this is called blend in the color colors. See how it's got it there? So I'm gonna put this on this side. I'm just gonna go real easy with it. Then once you go over that bone right there, then you can clamp, clamp down on a little bit, turn it, get a little tight. That's how it blend, that blue's blending in with that gray. Now this is how I do my flash. Y'all can do it a different way. You know, like I said, it's not written in stone. But basically, that's the main part of doing a jig is putting your glue on, then your thread on, and then your feathers on. Uh, that's the main important to a jig, and I'll show you why. If you don't have to do that, what can happen? So anyway, we'll get a, probably about three strands, three to four strands of, of this holographic silver. By the way, we're making, this is either called the Cold Blue or the Dallas Cowboy jig. Some people like Cold Blue, some people like the Dallas Cowboys. So anyway, get your strand, get about three strands. Now a lot of people go up and do all that, but personally, I take my finger and I spread my flash out like that and then I go on the side and it's going to look like that when I put it on there and it ain't going to be all bunched up together hopefully not 
<coughs> so anyway, I'll lay it on there and I'll tie it in just like that. Try to spread it out a little bit because I'm a picky. And then I'll take my scissors and I'll cut the excess off. You don't want to pull real tight and cut it because if you do, <clears throat> you'll bend your tensils and it'll try to flare up on you. So when you cut your flash, cut it loose instead of holding it real tight. So when you hold tight, it stretches that flash out and then you cut it, it curls it up and you don't want that. So then I'll just turn down the other side. Take the flash, put it on there. Like I said, I'm the slowest jig maker there are, but that's okay. We're going to get it do right. And we'll spin it on there. Now, this is a pretty hard jig to make. So, we'll take our excess off, cut it off a little bit here. Now, we're going to get some blue. Some blue. Just remember, guys, I'm not ignoring you. I'm doing this video for YouTube. And so that's probably why I'm not answering no questions. But we'll come back on and answer all you want. So I'll get about three to four strands of this blue. <coughs> and repeat what we did with the silver. See, here we'll take it, spread it out a little bit. And we'll try to put that blue kind in the middle where it blends a little bit better. I don't have any music on, so that's good. At least I'll, when this goes on YouTube, it won't get knocked off. And then, put it on the other side. Hope I ain't boring y'all. And we'll get there. Okay, so we got the flash on. We, we got the glue on. We've got it all nice and glued up where it ain't going nowhere. That's what we want. Uh, this this jig here's got a little bit more flash than maybe some of y'all like, but I really like putting it on there. Okay, then we go to the Chanel part. So you get you a big string out right here, and I, I'm so happy to think this is a number four Crystal Custom Made color. <clears throat> and we're going to do a three wrap. Three wrap is when you go one down. One up, I mean, sorry, one up, one down, and one back up. That's a three wrap. The two wrap is, I'll show you the difference. Here's a three wrap. Three wrap goes like this. You just twist it on there, pull your pull your Chanel back like that, and just take your thread and go all the way to the end of your thread there. Now that's the way we do a three wrap. A two wrap, you would do this way. You just put it on there and then spin it. That'd be a two wrap because you'd be going down and back up. That's a that's a two wrap. A one wrap would be well. Let me explain the two wrap because I don't want to go too fast for you. The reason the two wrap would be is that your jig's real small and you don't want to put a big body on it. So a two wrap would be like this: you wrap it down and then you go back up. That's a two wrap. Okay. Then your one wrap would be something like the three wrap. You just go go down like this and then wrap it one time. And then that would be one wrap. But this one we're doing a three wrap. So I hope I didn't lose you on the wraps. So we're going up. Then we'll go back down. Okay, now this very last one, when you go the last row here, like that, you want to pull it down. Now, if you did not glue your jig down, what is going to happen when you pull this tight, this Chanel tight, it's going to spin on you. All your feathers and everything is going to spin. It's going to be loose. That's why you have to put glue on there before you start anything. So now you can push this down and tighten it up. You can even break your Chanel if you want to. That's how glued it is. And just go back up. Go like that. And what I like to do is I like to give it one more rotation. And then I'll pull it down. Just like that. 
Now, if you didn't glue your jig down like I told you to, when you go to pull that down, all your feathers and everything's just going to flip over. You don't want that. It's going to just make you redo the whole jig. Or you're going to have a loose jig. Then I take one, two, three, four. Okay? Then I take this and I go turn it this way and go over it and back under it. And you go four. One, two, three, four. There you go. That's all you need to do. And then you just cut it off. Cut it up as far as you can. Take this whoop finish it. Now, a lot of people don't know how to use it, and I I'm not, don't know if I can teach you real well or not, but I'll try my best. Now, the only way I know to probably help you out is just take your whip finish and go in towards your face or in towards your body, wherever your uh, jig is, because you've got a groove here and a groove here. So you can put that groove on top and this in here, and then with this finger, roll it up as you're doing it. As you're doing it, roll side it should have like a square see that square or triangle or I you can even call it a sand glass thing and once you get that going you want to just hold your finger still this one still and raise it up and put it around the head and once you get it around the head just relax one two three pull it down. I broke the thread because I put too much horsepower on it. So if you do that, you just have to go and do this again because I put a little too much horsepower on there. But anyway. So the first one you do three. The reason you do three is so whenever you put three and you go to pull on it, that thread will go down into the where the hook is. And then your second one will be just just for the sake of conscience or whatever, you do four right, one, two, three, four, and then go like that and seal it down. Okay? Cut your excess off. So one, two, three, pull it. It should sink down into the uh, hook and then go one, two, three, four, and then lock her down. All right. Since we broke our thread off, we got to cut our excess off. Okay. There, and the second thing I do, well, actually the fifth thing I do, is I'll turn my jig upside down, and I'll take this flashing that I got here, and the, if you do like I told you, you're going to have like an arrow tail, like a, like a, uh, one arrow, and just take it up here, and go at an angle, cut it up, just like you do an Indian arrow, and then go back down this side same angle. You don't have to. You can go straight across. But I think it looks better like that when you cut it down an angle. Don't cut your feathers now. Don't cut your tail. You just want to go pretty even with it. Make it kind of look like that right there. Now, I use a UV resin made by Sarlo's. S- O L A R E Z. It's a UV resin, and you have to have a UV light for it to cure. Don't have to use UV if you don't want to. You could use something like this. This is another preferred diamond KBS. It does take UV light, but it does take a little while to dry, and it's a little high maintenance. So it just depends on what you want. But if you use the UV resin, uh, you're going to have to buy yourself a lot. So what I do is I take the UV resin. Now we done got our eyes on there. By the way, you can watch my video on it. I'll show you how to put the eyes on. But this is about time. So I take my UV resin, put a drop on it, get my brush, my nice clean brush, and I'll angle it. So what I'll do is I'll angle it and I'll dip it down under the chenille where the thread is and then I'll go over my eyes. See there? So you're killing two birds with one stone doing it this way. 
you're putting epoxy over your eyes plus you're sealing in the thread so you're doing two things at one time because it's very important to seal that thread up dip it down like I said angle your brush get it down there in the thread then over your jigs and your eyes so when it dries it all be sealed up together and that'll make your jig last a lot longer so that's what we made now that is the cold blue and I'll turn the camera around so you can see it <clears throat> for some reason this side shows a little better maybe and that's the cold blue see how the blue the glitter everything blends in uh, it's a real pretty jig you got a nice even tail it all looks like an arrow everything's nice and neat uh, if you want the recipe for this jig it's uh, you dip it in disco silver and then turn the jig up this way and brush in the candy blue that is a beautiful jig so that's how you make a jig now we did a two-tone color but you seen how the basics was and then I'll just sit it over here and let it dry so I hope y'all learned something this is Big Ken at Big Ken Jigs, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.